were about to take a tour to China. And we had been a couple of times, but I called up uh, my presenter there and I said, you know, maybe we'd like to do something on the program that the Chinese people would be familiar with and we could do our own Quartet San Francisco take on something. And so uh, without missing a beat, she said, Michael Jackson, everybody in China knows Michael Jackson. And, you know, left to my own devices, I probably wouldn't have done, I mean, I liked Michael Jackson and I grew up listening to the Jackson Five and everything, but I wasn't like a rabid Michael Jackson fan. But I, in wanting to create an arrangement that would resonate with our audiences in China, I started listening to a bunch of Michael Jackson and the more I listened to it, the more incredible he became to me, even after knowing him for all those years. But listening to those recordings, as I have to, over and over in order to get a feeling about how to translate it for string quartet, I started loving them more and more and more. And I think, you know, that's also at the center of Quartet San Francisco is that in order for us to play it, we collectively have to love it or else, or else it won't have a life once we get it off the page and start playing it. So then, you know, um, everybody has contributions. For example, you know, Matt. I, I get to play some, some rhythm and I get to play some guitar. Um, it's a great opportunity to kind of uh, explore the different sounds that uh, this acoustic instrument is capable of. Growing up listening to Quincy Jones arrangements, uh, that, that definitely left a mark on me. Um, and it's really, uh, it's very gratifying to be able to uh, bring that into this piece. And also growing up in the 80s, uh, being a big fan of all things electric guitar, uh, also a fun opportunity to kind of uh, tap into some of my earlier inspirations um, and use that to hopefully translate that energy to the audience. And then we're all happy. Everybody happy. Yeah, we, we talk a lot about how to get that sound through our instruments and stop thinking as violin, viola, and cello and start thinking, get inside the mind of an of a electric guitar player. Listen carefully to the groove, to what the rhythm players are doing and start replicating that and we rehearse that kind of thing we spend a lot of time talking about those kinds of things in rehearsal one thing we do is uh, we do groove exercises where we practice we take a couple of bars of the piece and we'll put a repeat sign around it and we'll just play those four bars over and over for sometimes minutes at a time you know minimum of two minutes uh, and sometimes we'll record it and listen back and then we'll analyze it and feel like, well, how is it similar to the original? How is it different from the original? Does it, do we drag? Do we push? Do we, you know, is it too heavy here? Is the balance right? How do we take this string quartet and, and create the texture of a rhythm section with a solo, like with a solo line? And how then do we pass that solo a lot around and give the voices of the rhythm section have little funky bits, particularly in the Michael Jackson, the viola has got a lot of that funky guitar rhythm in there, you know, and so we practice doing that for, for a long periods of time, because it's hard, because we're doing it with a full arm, we have a tendency to either get tired or we have to develop muscles for it. Our second piece today is Guamba. Guamba is composed by me, and it's a piece that I wrote to sort of commemorate a trip of Quartet San Francisco to the island of Guam. And uh, I was having all kinds of warm and fuzzy feelings about our friends in Guam. And I was inspired to sort of create a piece of music about it. Interesting thing is that there is no real indigenous music of Guam in this piece. But I, it was just that I was having a lot of feelings about the island and they are so isolated out there in the Pacific, they're really 3,000 miles from anything. And so I was just inspired to write a samba for string quartet and I had just come back from Guam. And so I decided to combine the two names together, Guam and samba, and I came up with this name of Guamba.